Hey, what's up guys? It's Masterleaf here, coming back to do a, another first person video. I know since the last one that these are in pretty high demand. So yes, it's going to be against uh, Phoenix. I'm going to be picking Black Hand for this series as he wants to learn against Black Hand with GDI. So that is fine by me. So yes, we'll go for a power plant first. I've also disabled these Skype sounds, which I noticed to be quite prevalent in the uh, last video. Let's just turn down the volume a little bit there. It's a bit too loud. And we'll go for two spikes. There's two uncontested spikes on this map that you can take easily with a uh, black hand. Should have drafted a tower towards that spike first. And I feel a bit of lag, nothing too significant. Anyways, we just want to take these spikes without our engineers getting sniped. That would be great. But since I did not draft that uh, Kabar squad towards this spike first, I might be in risk of losing this engineer, but perhaps not. Let's drop our refinery right there. And also deny any of his scouts. That's what we're going to do. I expect him to go for a Pitbull first, as he knows that I like to go for a Reckoner Rush. So we're going to go for the uh, refine um, harvester. We're actually going to play an eco build this time. Just screw around a little bit. I'm not going to become too predictable. Anyways, he'll expect me to go for the reckoner, so he'll go for a pit bull first, most likely. He does manage to get a scout into my base, but I expect him to have a pit bull out anyways to be safe, unless he hasn't gone for one. So he managed to get a squad into my base. He's going for a harvester right there. So if he drafts another, tu another turret, then that's good with us. That is totally fine. And now we're going to go for the expand. And he is slightly behind of me when it comes to building refineries. That is because my power plants take $500 to create and his take $700, which means they take two additional seconds to build which explains why he is slightly behind in that regard. We're now going to go for the expansion, like I said. We're going to attack this MC with the Cabal Squad. This is actually a really effective strategy. Main, maybe not on this map, but other maps, you can, if you've got two or three Cabal Squads around, uh, they can do quite a significant amount of damage to the MCV uh, when, when it's expanding. Now we want to keep away from those harvesters there, just in case he has, you know, we don't, we don't want to lose those to the uh, machine guns on the harvesters. I have set up a bookmark in his base just so I can quickly jump back to it. And now we'll go for the expand. Gonna draft a turret and also I expect him to queue a tower to kill off this Cabal Squad so we're not going to allow him to take that e so easily. We're going to go for some buggies and bikes now to harass him. We're also going to just ensure that he doesn't leech that blue Tiberium field which is just going to be uh, bad for us as once GDI get their economy rolling then they be can become quite powerful and hard to stop even while playing as the black hand faction so yeah we're gonna draft the shredder turret right here kill this squad off you'll see that i'm going for a third refinery before a second war factory but that is not a problem with us whatsoever and uh, as the follow-up we're going to go for the second war factory and we're going to place it in an area where he doesn't really expect me to 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 uh, go for the war factory placement I want to try and conceal this war factory the best I can. Anyways, we're going to harass him right now. We're going to queue some bikes and uh, split our attacks up. So go for more bikes. We're just going to make it incredibly hard for him to stop every single bike harass that I'm going for. And if he decides to go for that blue field right there, then of course he will lose a load of his bikes and such. So yes, he is going for pit bulls now. He knows that I'm coming from the top, but he doesn't know I'm coming from the bottom. I'm just going to contain him for the meantime and uh, get these bikes around the flanks and we can leech this blue Tiberium field given the map control now that we have now is pretty good. Drop our 4th refinery and uh, snipe this, this uh, rifle squad right there. Now he might be able to see this squad coming, that, the, that squad of bikes because he can see there that I have uh, got bikes. So yes, uh, we can shoot over the refinery, which is which is really good. And we're going to snipe this harvester if he allows us to, but he doesn't, so that's that's fine. We're going to go for a uh, refinery now, 
Uh, sorry, a... Since he's spamming pits, perhaps it's not a good idea to go for tech. Instead, we will go for infantry. And we want to deny these scouts the best we can. And get this Cabal squad near to the barracks, just so we have that uh, Cabal aura for our rockets. Anyways, we're going to prevent this harvester from getting destroyed. Obviously, we want to save our harvesters at all costs. And uh, get this harvester back to work here. And just keep massing those up. But he is massing a load of bike, bi uh, I mean uh, pits. But if he decides to take a shot at that harvester, then he will lose his forces. He's going for Preds now, so we're going to switch to dual MCV and retain our bike buggy. Now he has transitioned to those. This harvester isn't doing any work, which is bad for us. And let's draft some more, some more cabals for our infantry. And he's going to be making his move towards the top there. Let's. Put these rockets in group number three and send them towards the uh, greenfield here to protect our MCV from any damage while it expands. And to get those there, let's immediately start working on the charged particle beams and a Tiberium chemical plant as he is... This is a contested field, right? We can take this field without any problem with Tib Vane. But yeah, he's got Preds kind of scattered around. I've got these rocket squads here just in case. And yeah, here he comes with those. Let's not necessarily waste these units for no reason. We're going to wait till our chem plant is up. And then we will tiv vein everything. Like a complete noob. That we are. So yes, we will just always afraid of it somewhat. Start going for beams now. Try and lure him into attacking. But, you know, while this has been happening, I've done a good job to leech that blue Tiberium field, which is often what decides the uh, winner of this uh, map. And he has gone for a load of tier 1 units and no air, which is surprising. Anyways, I expect him to go for jugs now. And there is a load of those... Pit balls. Let's get some turrets here and there. Okay, and it's gone for snipers, which is what you would expect from a GDI player on this map: is to go for sniper teams. Anyways, we're not going to waste any of those. We're going to sell some power plants here just for. Some Cabal Squads so we can easily handle those pit bulls without any problem. And yes. He's got jugs there, which he's trying his hardest to get out of range of my my chemical plant. He knows that I have a chemical plant now, which is a problem for us. He has also a load of APCs. We should have a Redeemer out soon, which is just great. And here we go. We can just kill off all these jugs, which is great for us. But he's going to overwhelm here, me here by the look of things. So let's fence this MCV. He's got loads of jugs, how he managed to just spam out of nothing. But we are uh, going to be close. To, no, we're not going to get the Redeemer out, unfortunately, there. So, yeah, Nash looks like he may win this first game. So, well played to him. Of course, once uh, GDI are allowed to tech up and get Juggernauts, then it becomes incredibly hard for us to, to beat them as Black Hand. So, we want to apply as much early pressure as possible. And we'll just say GG right here and proceed into the next game. So well played to him, going for the jugs, which is the main problem when you're playing as Black Hand. You want to try and kill them before they get the jugs, obviously. I think my biggest mistake was not applying any early pressure, like going for any kind of rushes. So we're going to amend that in the next game and go for perhaps a Reckoner Rush of some description. 
play the same map. And yeah, we're going to go for the Reckoner Rush. I believe that's the, the, the best rush to, to execute against GDI. Uh, Disciple opening isn't as good on this map because, well, I suppose you could go for Disciple opening and take your opponent's spike. It is doable. But, yeah, actually, it is doable, isn't it? We can go for four engineers and take all four spikes, but it is kind of risky. And it could not work. Since his spikes, the bottom two spikes that we're going to capture are near to his base, he can go for an APC and kill them off, so perhaps that isn't the best of ideas that I've ever had. Anyways, what is he doing? Is he going to be coming back soon? There he is. Okay, so we're going to play on the same map, same matchup, same everything, and uh, hopefully we can do a bit better this time and not die straight away. So yeah, obviously you saw by that game that you need to to weaken GDI to a point where you can win with your, your um, tier 1. So we're going to abuse tier 1, which is what Black Hand's all about. And of course, when we see pits, we want to be going for infantry as soon as possible rather than just spamming bite buggy. Bite buggy works just fine, but perhaps I just did not spam enough in that game. So let's go for two engineers once again. And uh, captured the both spikes here without any trouble whatsoever. And we will draft more Cabal Squads just to deny the Pit Scout, the inevitable Pit Scout. Also, we're going to try and intercept any cheap Scouts that he is able to get into my base, like before he had a Rifle Squad in the bottom, which should not have scouted me because I'm Black Hand and they can... Deny every scouting unit in the game without any trouble. So yes, we're going to position this Cabal in a place to intercept enemy uh, pit bulls. And he's doing a good job with that there. The thing is though, if he goes for a, a uh, Harvester first before Refinery, I mean uh, before pit bull, he's going to lose his... Uh, his uh, refinery or and or war factory to the uh, reckoner rush, rush that I'm going for. So yep, yeah, go for the uh, reckoner. And here comes the pit bull. So we're going to intercept that now. And let's see if we can get this reckoner out in time before he spots it. So we'll get this to the back of the base as soon as possible. And he doesn't know where it is, which is going to work to my advantage here. So he expects that I, I'm going to take the shortest route possible, which is usually what I do, but I'm not going to do that this time. And this Cabal Squad may actually finish off this pit. And there it does. It goes. So yeah, that's very nice. We were able to to kill off that there, but um, we're going to lose our Cabal Squad anyways to the uh, Tiberium Exposure, which is not good, to say the least. Anyways, we're going to go around here, which I believe is the uh, safest route possible. He has managed to get a pit towards my Reckoner. I'm going to have here that, that soon. He's gone for two pits only to scout. And now he's going to have to take his harvesters off the line if he wants to stop this. So we're going to kill that off. He now has to make an APC. We're going to go for the Disciple upgrade now just to clean up his units. We've got five halves already, so we know we don't need to go for a sixth one. Get that Cabal Squad out of the way. We're also going to try and pick at a power plant that he has um, in his base. And there we can see a power plant. Since his MCV is unpacked, we can uh, take out... We can take out that power plant without the threat of a... So yeah, we're going to take that out, no problem whatsoever. We're going to also try and d disrupt that harvester for as long as possible. And also he's probably going to go for a tower now. So let's just k keep it near to the MCV. And we will have a turret out soon. Anyways, we're going to put this back into there. Get this co this Black Hand Squad to do more deal more damage to him. And soon we will have the Black Disciple upgrade. We actually have 10 rockets already heading towards his base. If we can kill off more power plants, then that would mean he will not have enough power to fund or to place turrets, which is going to need desperately now to hold off 
this wave of infantry. So we're going to go and transition to harvesters now. We don't want to overextend when we're doing this rush. We just want to do enough to force an overspend of units. Anyway, so we're going to send these bikes towards him right now. And he just placed the refinery at the wrong time there. Perhaps he didn't see my my units. But yeah, he's going to not have the units he needs to, to stop these bikes. He actually did not see them coming. So I'll be surprised if he stops this. But for some reason my bikes are not doing a single thing, which isn't really helping us. And as the follow-up, we will go for more bikes. We're going to just keep applying pressure, keep that pressure up. That's what you want to do as you're playing Black Hand. And we'll queue those up first, get some Kabar squads out to buff those, those rocket squads. It gives them 50% additional fire rate. We've got eight harvesters now, which is more than adequate. And we're beginning to mass the bikes up to a point again where we can go on a raid and perhaps kill off some more harvesters of his. And since this spike is in proximity to us, we can take it pretty easily with an engineer. Just go for more bikes now. Now he probably expects me to go for more infantry but we're going to instead go for mass scorpion tanks to counter what he's going to be building to counter my infantry so this game is a lot like rock paper scissors but i just queued a tier, tier, tier 3 there which you know does work as well i guess we can go for the one clicks that works too and as we have total map control we can take advantage of that and start leashing that uh, ever so useful Blue Tiberium, we're going to need that to fund this operation that we're doing. So yeah, here he comes with his pit bull to scout me. We're going to just try and pick at these very vulnerable power plants here. He can't really save this because it's well out of the build radius there of a watchtower. So even if he has a watchtower, you can only place it right there, as you can see. So yeah, let's go for the secondary MCV, which I forgot to train. We're floating a fair bit of money. We're also going to work on every single upgrade and not just one or two of them. And let's queue up those units right there. And we will send these bikes to kill this harvester here. We'll take that. So Nash is donating a free harvester to us. It's very nice of him. And after that, I think... We will probably just... Yeah, he's beginning to mass jugs again, so it's getting to a point where it's going to be incredible, dif incredibly difficult for us to to stop the jugs, but he's on one juggernaut just at the moment, which is not a cause for alarm. But uh, yeah, we have one clicks now, so his economy won't be good enough to fund this. So this is what Dirty Dutch likes to do. He likes to slightly injure his opponent's harvesters and then finish them all off with those. And what people like to do to counter jugs is they move their MCB forward. Once we can get it unpacked, of course. And then we just creep towards him and place obelisks. In fr right in front of the juggernauts. That's really the one of the only ways you can kill off uh, jug spam as a black hand. So yeah, we're going to go for mass raider buggies now. And we're going to also click him. He's only got one rail in there, so that's not enough for him to defend this off. If he decides to send his jugs into range, then he will lose them to that. So yeah, we're going to send these units in. EMP that Marv. Getting 
get those EMP buggies continuing to EMP this. Want to disable, want to destroy these husks as well. Remember to get the uh, husks, otherwise those will just keep coming back like annoying flies. All right. So we've got no more buggies for some reason. But we've got four obelisks of light which will be able to easily handle this Marv. And uh, those obelisks are just simply too much for APMO watchtowers alone to handle. So that's going to be good game against Nash. I made it a bit more messier than what I could have done. But uh, yes, uh, not bad overall. I mean the Reckoner Rush is pretty lethal as you saw there, nine minute game. Not much else to say there. The Reckoner Rush, although it didn't destroy anything, it still forced units out of him. He had to make three pit bulls at least to kill those that Reckoner there. And yeah, he had to also handle the Black Hand squads and he also unpacked his MCV. So the only way to have done that would have been to move his harvesters off the line to try and crush the Black Hand squads, which would not have done anything because with proper micro, you can easily kill those off. So yeah, we're going to change the map to something else. Yes, so uh, he may have a hunch that I'm recording just because I'm not chatting too much with him. He's not saying anything, so he kind of he perhaps knows. I don't know. So yeah, we're going to play it on new maps since they are really good. Actually, I like them. Uh, most of them do favor Black Hand, though. Actually, all maps favor Black Hand because that is because Black Hand is overpowered, ladies and gentlemen. So yeah, we'll go for one engineer as we have one spike here there's also one contested spike but we don't want to take that as if we want to take that spike we're going to have to go for shrine since rifle squads always re reach the uh, garrisonable buildings there and yes we will obviously we want to take that spike after we placed our refinery to get that $500 cash back back. So yeah, we're going to do that. Put this Cabal Squad into there, just to anti-scout him. We're not going to execute the same rush again. We want to kind of mix it up, force him to make a Pitbull first. Because remember, if he makes a Pitbull first, he's delaying his Harvester by 7 seconds. And we're not delaying our Harvester. We're just, you know, fear, making him fear the Reckoner Rush to a point where he has to go for Pitbull first every single game, otherwise he's going to fall victim to it. So we'll go for a Harvester and then we'll proceed by making a Raider Buggy to kill off his Pitbull, which is obviously what he's going to do. GDI have no other reliable method of scouting Black Hand unless they go for a Pitbull. So there's a Rifle Squad in there, obviously. We haven't saw the Pitbull yet, but I assure you it will be on its way very soon. And I expect him maybe to be going up the top here. Uh, I don't know. Yeah, he's not scouting me. That's really weird. Usually you expect one pit ball at the very least out of Nash. But he's playing safe. Oh, there's the pit ball. Okay, there's the pit ball. Yeah, that's that's what we like to see. One pit ball right there. He's going to see that I have a raider buggy. I can kill this pit ball off. We can also get some repairs nearby to this war factory. And then proceed to start killing the unit again. Which kind of gives me an unfair advantage against this unit. So we don't want to make two. Sometimes I make two, but that's just overkill. We don't want to delay our harvesters by our five seconds. And uh, our expansion too. We don't want to delay that. That would be bad. Anyways, his expansion is very much delayed compared to mine. My MCV has already found its way towards the expansion. We're going to finish off this Pitbull off here, which is on little to no HP. Actually, its health bar is non-existent. Right, so he doesn't know if I'm going for two War Factories or Eco. I could have gone for two War Factories and surprised him. But I expect him to go for yet again another Pitbull, because as GDI you can never be too safe against Black Hand. You always want to know what they're doing. We could go for the blue field now, since we're going for bikes as the follow-up to this build. So there's a rifle squad there. That's to confirm if I'm going for a two war factory build or a third refinery. So he now knows that I'm going for 
he knows that I'm going for uh, four refineries. Well, not necessarily four refineries, but he knows that I'm going for a third refinery before that second war factory, which is the important thing you need to know when you're playing as GDI against Black Hand. You need to scout around about that time. Anyways, he's going to chase that buggy down, which I don't really advise because I'm going to be uh, reinforcing it with a couple of bikes, which will be going to harass his harvesters anytime soon. And also this pit's taking significant damage, so we'll finish it off real quick. And uh, that's what we'll do. We're going to finish that pit bull off. There it goes. So we've got three bikes there, five bikes in total actually. He was able to hold that off, but I am ahead of him in terms of refineries. This harvester doing nothing there, which is really great. Get another harvester towards that field, and also we want to deny these scouts. And go for more bike buggy. Now you don't really want to be going for pits against bike buggy, as I mentioned before. And I didn't really pay attention there, losing my my Confesca Bar Squad two two rifles. That should never happen if you're playing concentrating and paying attention. So yes, he will see that I'm going for bike buggy, and he's probably going to switch to Preds now, seeing that I'm going for a lot of bike buggy. We're going to also hide our third war factory. I'm not sure where his pits are. Okay, his pits are there, just chilling. We're going to use that trick to clone our units in the moment. And there's a pit bull right there. We're going to kill that. Three units. That's always nice to see and have. So yeah, we're going to just kill that off. So yeah, we're going to see Preds coming out of Nash now. We're not going to engage that many units just yet. We've got a load of those. What we could do now is split our units up and perhaps try and snipe a harvester. So let's split those up. And see if we can do some damage with these. Sell off one of those. So he knows that I'm trying to flank him up there. But in the same at the same time, we're gonna be going for our tier three and also one clicks. So we're gonna start working on tip core ASAP. He's got Preds to hold me off right there. And I think we're going to consolidate now and go for one major push in the bottom. So maybe we can tip vein that there. But the main concern again is Juggernauts. So we're going to go for the counter the Juggernauts, which is probably going to be infantry and something along those lines. We're also going to save some money up now for a tip vein. And holy shit, see that coming. Now he's going for that Marv. I'm not sure if he's going to go towards that field though, just yet. Let's go for beams. Now I've got loads of bike buggy here. So I don't really expect him to... Alright, here we go. Take a swipe at that MCV. He was able to expand and defend nicely against this push. And of course, if he goes into that tier field, he's going to lose his units to the tip vein. And now he's going to marvest that field there. Now, I don't expect him to have a million preds at the field. So we're going to click this. Kill off those. And I think we'll go for mass beams now to handle the Marv. And these harvesters are kind of vulnerable, so we'll kill those off. But he has his Marv out now, which is a uh, big problem for us. We can, however, click that Tiberium field. Which is what we're reserving the $4,000 in our bank account for, is to tip vein that field. So 
So we're gonna try and kill off this Marv. Get more of those. Now I don't suppose he's prepared for this just yet. And this MCV is kind of vulnerable. So we'll try and kill this off real quick. We don't have EMP coils, which is unfortunate for us. However, we are going to destroy this MCV and also we need to reinforce with more of those. Our beams aren't doing the enough damage to this MCV. Let's get back right here. And if he decides to come further into range, he's going to lose his um, his units to the Tiv vein. So that's entirely up to him if he wants to proceed with that. As you can see, he's going to do a scout now. He's going to scout me. We want to keep an eye on this base. We can use the beam cannons to, to kill off those uh, juggernauts. But we need to make sure that we're in range. That's the only thing. So we are firmly into range now. We're going to just retreat. He's got loads of snipers, which again are causing some problems for us. Use this harvester to snipe those. And we're going to crush this husk here with the sniper team. I mean with the harvester. Harvesters can crush husks if you didn't know. Those snipers are doing a load of damage. Holy shit. So this Marv right here going a bit too far into range. And he isn't going to quite finish me off with that. We can kind of sell that off now. And this Marv's getting shot up real bad by beam cannons now. Gonna lose this Marv real quick. Let's move this MCV further into range. Alright, so he's used his clicks now to kill me off there, but it didn't quite have enough damage to completely destroy that imp. He has got loads of jugs now, which is a huge, huge problem. So I think what we'll do is we'll wait for the one click, and then we'll use the one click to uh, finish him off there send these infantry forward just so we can get uh, some vision for our beam cannons. We're going to kill that off. And yes, kill that off. And of course we can one click that. And all those preds will die in a matter of seconds. And we've got a couple halves here doing nothing. We could take this opportunity and do something about that. So yeah, now he's not afraid of the tip vein. So now we're going to just apply pressure with these. See if he can uh, hold this off. Just one more jug to de destroyed and yes. So we're gonna kill those husks off as soon as bloody possible. So yeah, just a couple more units to be destroyed and we should have won this game. And yeah, it wasn't a bad build, although to be honest, with a Redeemer, I reckon I would have been more successful. <laughs> and GG, holy crap, what a game.
Beam cannons, although not primarily designed to counter jugs, can be a counter. And of course, on that particular map, you always are in danger of that Tiv Vane. That is why he didn't move forward with his uh, Juggernauts. Although, to be honest, it was an ill-placed Tiv... Uh, I mean, uh, Shockwave on the Beam Cannons. He should have had the Ma further into range before doing that there. So that's his mistake. Although, to be honest, he didn't really know if I had enough funds to call in the Tiv Vane, so he was kind of paranoid about that all, time, all the time. So yeah, that was a fairly good match, in my opinion. And now we just need to try and get Revora to work, as it will probably not. Alright, yeah, so yeah, Revora is acting a bit gay now. Okay, there we go. We can finally host something. Or maybe we cannot. Anyways, I'll cut the recording here and I'll be back when... Uh, yeah, there we go, so we host the game now. Is he coming back? He is in the lobby, but I do not trust this. As I have seen players in game when they are clearly not, they are offline. For example, Dirty Dutch right here, I doubt he's in a game, he's probably offline. Death Sentence, didn't see his room. And Nash, he should be back any moment here. I think we'll cycle through the maps, go for another one. Anyways, I'll cut the recording and I'll be back when the match is ready to start. Alright, so I think Revora had some issues. And this game got delayed for some time, but it seems like we are finally ready to go on the map Twisted Rift. Same matchup as before, Blackhand versus GDI versus Steve Nashington, who is more known as Phoenix these days. Anyways, we could go for the Reckoner, but I believe that's just far too cheesy for us, so we'll play normal, we'll play safe, and we'll do our best win or lose anyways go for a power plant first obviously you want to do that and we're gonna draft some cabal squads you know as every game and he talks a fair bit uh, if he says anything more then I may have to mute him but I don't think that'll be necessary Yeah, I think I will mute him for this video because it does get kind of annoying and kind of distracting after a while. And by the way, if you want to know how to mute players, you go to the player status screen and just tick this button right here. That's all you need to do. We'll take this spike over real quick. And obviously we want to just, you know, do our best to anti-scout him. He could have a squad coming from there, so we'll send this Kabar squad to intercept if he is. Now, I doubt he'll come anywhere near that bunker, but he's more likely to go up there. So we're going to deny those scouts, go for a harvester before anything else. We could go for a bike rush, but I believe that is far too easy for him to stop. And uh, we'll put us behind economically. Not so much if you go for the Reckoner though, as uh, your rush still is not over once they counter it with pitbulls, as you have those black hand squads, which can still deal damage. I mean, they're really powerful. And when you get a Cabal squad into, rain, um, into range of those black hands, the DPS increases by 50%. Staggering 50% DPS improvement, since the uh, fire rate is increased by 50% when you have Cabal squads within the range of the black hand squad. So, we'll get this buggy out again, just to, you know, and scout this pit bull because it can be quite annoying when you're expanding this you know lone pit bull taking a load of shots at that and Dutch is now talking to me <laughs> saying something that I really don't want to hear in in this game I mean what does he take me for someone who can multitask like a pro <laughs> really doubt it all right And yes, it seems like his expansion is well underway. Uh, this Cabal Squad will finish that off, which is nice. Get those Harvesters queued up. And sixth one on the way. We could send it towards the blue like last time. He's going for more Pitbulls now, so perhaps he knows, he fears that I'm going for a secondary War Factory. 
So he's taking the safe move and going for pits. Let's anti-scout this squad off real quick. Go for, yet again, another harvester. And since he is making pits, we're just going to go for eco. And try and damage that power plant there. Force a tower drop. Scout what he's doing. He's going for harvesters now, so just pure eco. Right, Nashington, this game. He hasn't bothered to send a harvester towards that field there, obviously, because if he'd done that, he would be in extreme risk of losing it. Anyways, we're going to send that buggy there to kill that pitbull off. We don't want that pitbull to know what we're doing. Our next move will be, of course, going for infantry. But, you know, we could go for tech. Tech works too. Tech and then redeemer. But, you know, we will need infantry eventually to hard counter what he'll train to kill off my bike buggy. Which will probably be Preds. Usually is, anyways. So he's going for more pit bulls right now. He's killing off that buggy, which is exactly what I want him to do. So exactly the same build as last time. We're going to have a nine bikes. And uh, yeah, let's just kill these pits off one by one. And pits aren't very cost effective against bike buggy, especially when the bike buggy numbers grow to a point where they're just, you know, unbeatable. Now, usually I go for a third war factory before my tier three, but uh, I'm going to go for the third war factory before that. I'm going to also clone up these bike buggies just to get some, you know, additional DPS. We're going to try and lure him away from his base. You know, that would be nice. We're going to clump up our units here. And get as many decoys as possible. And get another MCV, I think. And here we go. So we'll just kill off all of these pit bulls. He's going to waste a load of shots to to kill off a load of those decoys, which is... By the look of things, I mean, he lost a load of pits there, and uh, I mostly lost my decoys, which was exactly what uh, I wanted to see. So we're going to stop queuing bikes. I have a couple bikes here. I have four in total, so... And I believe I am working on uh, charge particle beams before anything else, which is just fine. We're going to have our um, chemical plant up soon. Two two-tip vein, everything here. It's as lame as it gets, I'm afraid. But uh, I make these videos to kind of teach you guys how to play. That's what these videos are all about. It's not about how I play or anything. It's just... Anyways, we're going to finish off these harvesters with, that are going to be affected by the Tiv vein. So we'll finish off these harvesters one by one. And now he's going to lose those harvesters. He's going for mammoths now, so yeah, obviously we can't contend with mammoth tanks. We're going to have to switch for something else. And is that a third MCV? That was really not what I wanted. But, you know, we'll do a bike rush. That's no problem. And of course, what we can do now is we can one-click this here. And I doubt we'll be in range of anything else. So we just get one harvester, one refinery, which, you know... <laughs> is more than enough damage to justify the uh, uh, Catalyst Missile. I'm not sure of any situation or instance where the Catalyst Missile is simply not worth it. Usually does pay off in one way or another. Anyways, we used our clicks, so now we're just going to go for infantry. Uh, we went for far too many MCVs, I'm afraid. Did not really want to go for that many MCVs. Let's go for more bikes now, and uh, we have tip course, so our bikes are very, very useful. And we're going to get those bike numbers up into a volume that we can kill off enemy aircraft that will probably most likely deal with this, and or sniper teams. We have a load of buggies that we can use to 
that we can use to kill off sniper teams. Anyway, he's going for rail guns. I'm not sure what the logic behind that was, as I'm going for infantry mostly. Anyways, we can move this MCV towards him. And why not place a refinery here? Alright. So we're just going to mass bikes. Let's get some uh, rockets there, just in case he has like a lone mammoth tank that he's going to use to, to uh, harass me. I don't want that to happen. Sell off that. And we don't have any one clicks we can use. Usually Black can rely on those clicks to assist them. So now we're going to reveal those those sniper teams. He's going to lose all of them here to uh, just one Cabal squad. And our Redeemer engineering facility will place here. I believe now we'll go for a load of beam cannons. And again, we can use these uh, decoys for something to give something for the watchtower to shoot at. And of course, uh, I have my MCV. Uh, almost there. We can reinforce now with more infantry. And I have charged particle beams, which is just excellent. We want to disrupt his economy here, his harvesting, so we can establish an economic advantage over him. So yeah, we keep massing those up. And this juggernaut here, we can try and take that out. Our Redeemer should be out now, so let's get that into the fray. I'll just popping out right there, which is nice. And let's get our t chemical plant right the hell back up. And I think we'll queue some obelisks now to handle these units that he's building. And we'll post prone production of infantry for the time being. He's desperately trying to hold this off. And I'm afraid I don't think it's going to quite work out for him. And he's going to straight up lose that juggernaut. Or maybe not. We're going to put two saboteurs into this redeemer just to confer some, some repairs that we're going to need. And... While we're doing this, we can start messing up an army to take him out his position now at that uh, bottom base. We've got beams, like loads of beams. Didn't see those bloody beams, man. Now, don't don't ask me how I got many. Uh, perhaps I forgot all about them. But nonetheless, we're going to use everything here to uh, kill off his base. And the Redeemer will keep him busy. He has already used his shockwave. And we have... We have that already done. Of course, the uh, Redeemer's Rage Gen here will be just extremely useful for us. Of course, we don't want to lose those. Uh, let's rage everything here. There we go. And just base creep towards this lot. We don't want to lose this Redeemer right here, so we'll retreat that. We can use the uh, barracks to building block those units from uh, trying to pursue this down. And of course, we can always sell like Hand of Nods onto enemy units. That does a lot of damage too. And let's finish off the remainder of his base there. Of course, his power plants are in that base, so... He's going to lose a significant amount of power if he doesn't respond to that. And let's see if we can get a kill off on this mammoth tank just by selling barracks onto it. Not quite, but almost. So yeah. And rage gen is gonna be done now. 
That race gen man just causes so much havoc. It's like an it, it's the ability that handles spam when you're playing as black hand. Of course, you as black hand can spam as well. I believe he's going to lose his MCV any moment. Yeah, see that look how fast that d just dies. Let's move this MCV forward so we can place juggernauts further into range. And yeah, those uh, juggernauts are just dying so fast now to what I have. We're also going to take this opportunity to leech that field with our own harvesters. And we still got a load of beams. Beams aren't that bad against uh, infantry. I mean heavy infantry in particular. Because they output, emit uh, grenade type damage which is actually really good against infantry. And I'll check my hard disk space, see how much room I have left for more games. But yes, I am almost out of cash. I can start leeching some of those fields that are kind of uh, regrown. So yeah, this is a good game. The fourth game, I believe this is. So yeah, uh, Black Hand once again triumphing, triumphing over GDI. That was a fairly lengthy match, 13 minutes overall, and I'll check to see how long this is, this video overall. But to be honest, I think I have enough space to do one more game, but I'll be right back. Uh, just going to check out that real quick. All right, guys, I'm back to do the last game, which will be on the map, Mountain Pass. Will be. Uh, I've actually got a lot of room on my hard drive, enough to do another hour or so, but due to my internet being extremely slow, I'm going to cut the video after this match. So yes, get that power plant up. Um, there is two spikes on this map. One is kind of dangerous to get, so I'm just going to get one spike at the moment here. And there's this bunker right here that uh, if you take that over you can kill your opponent's engineer if he's going for it which is really really odd how Predator would design a map where your opponent could uh, kill an engineer when it's his own spike and not contested so we're not going to capture that before we have our refinery placed And we safely managed to grab that spike there. Now, my guess is he went for a couple rifles at that field. I'm gonna kill this squad off real quick. And likewise with this one. And he might finish me off there. Yeah, he will, unfortunately. We might be able to cut it off though with a buggy, if we get a buggy. Rolling towards there, we could kill that engineer. But it's looking extremely like it now. Alright, it's going to be close. It's going to be incredibly close. No, we're not going to get it. Damn it. Oh well. I can always scout him now. See, if I paid a, a little bit more attention there, I could have... Could have killed that engineer with that Cabal squad. But it was not to be. Let's try and harass this power plant right now. We'll send this uh, war fact, this uh, MCV uh, towards the war factory just so we can get some repairs for it as we expand. We're also going to power down one of these refineries just so our harvester builds at a faster speed. Now this map is favoring GDI massively because of the choke points, so we, want, we don't want to allow it to go for too long. At the same time, we don't want it to go too short as Bike Rush showed us in the uh, world championship we don't want it to, you know we don't want to do an all-in because that just is stupid so yeah we're going to expand we're well ahead in expansion timing which is just great that pitbull has it's inflicted a significant amount of damage onto my harvester there so we're going to just draft a turret here and handle it my harvest is getting some repairs because they're nearby to a war factory. I remember when I started playing this game, you know, Green Zero, he always used to go on about how important it is putting your war factory near to the refinery. And it does yield some benefits, you know. 
if you got this like lone pit situation you can get some harvester repairs while you eco boom and you don't need to really overreact to one unit so yes it's not really a bike buggy map because it's so closed instead we're going to go for infantry i believe this is a map where infantry is probably the best course of action to take and then we'll go for a tier 3 afterwards uh, multi mcv could work but uh infantry will be the bread and butter force of black hand on this map i can guarantee it all right and as far as i know he is not fully informed about this shrine we're also going to tech straight up to tier 3 and to go for the one clicks we're going to hit him with one clicks and infantry at his expansion field so let's move these infantry into position let's scout him to see what he's doing if he's going to be going for a uh, harvester i mean uh, tier 2 or if he's going to be going for simply a fourth refinery it's looking like he went for an airfield all right so going for that airfield so we'll queue a couple mantis which are very very good at handling handling those now right now he's going to be making units that aren't necessarily useful to him later on which includes the pit bulls and predators we've got some units there to defend let's get this mantis into position so we can uh, take out those hammerheads that he's going for so you know that buggy did reveal to us that he's going for hammerheads which is just great i just realized that he can intercept this harvester which is not good he might be able to kill that off for it, which is really really bad all right, so let's get the Mantis into action. Right. And yeah, as you can see there, we've got a nice kill off on that Hammerhead. So what you want to do when you're playing as Black Hand is to use these... Okay, so he's pulling Harvesters off the line now, which means he's desperate in holding this off. But these Mantises are just preventing his Hammerheads from being useful here. And I've already massively paid off here. He's lost all of his harvesters at his field and he's probably going to lose the fourth one there and yeah gg so nash looks like he's just falling to bits here and my computer's been getting to lag slightly not so much but could be the map anyways i hope you guys enjoyed this video as short or as long as it may be i'm not sure it's been cut off many times and yeah i hope you uh, liked it and uh, yeah please stay tuned as there is more coming up and I will be without internet for probably a week or so but uh, that's nothing compared to the interval at which I haven't been posting videos in the past so yeah this is Master Leaf peace out